unpleasant world of pen and teller. another episode of the unpleasant world of Penn and Teller. A little later on, we will have the one and the only Mr. Alexi Sale out here. <laughs> Alexi! And I will be suffering for the cause of stand-up comedy, and we will be performing the world's most expensive card trick, and Teller will be doing some great sleight of hand, including sticking a cigarette where you'd least expect it. But you know, <laughs> some of the most entertaining and magical stuff we know of is science. We've got some kids here. We're gonna do a little science for you, okay? You guys know about liquid nitrogen? You know anything about it? Uh, no. Well, liquid nitrogen is uh, it's what the air is made of. It's 80% nitrogen. And when you chill it down to like 300 degrees below zero, it turns into a liquid, just like, well, it's careful, it's careful. It's, it's very dangerous. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do a little thing for you. We have uh, uh, a rose here. Just, just check out that rose. Give it a little, give it a little sniff. You put in the liquid nitrogen. That's going to chill it down very, very quickly to way below zero. And you just watch what happens to it. This is why it's so dangerous here. You pull that out, and you just have a little rose crumble there. But we invented some stuff ourselves. You might want to write this down, kids. You want to try it at home. You take two <laughs> matches and an aspirin, a regular headache tablet, and you put it in uh, tin. You call this tin foil over here? Yeah. Tin foil. Okay. And then we're going to take a little bit of just, just stage makeup stuff, and we put this in with the uh, aspirin and the matches. And you want to you watch your asses on this, kids. And, uh, <laughs> and Teller's just going to put it in there and, and watches Teller. No, you want to push it down, Teller. You want to push it down a little better. Push it. It's got it's to sink, Teller. It's got to sink. It's not going to do anything. Just, just, just push it. <laughs> Through a Paris finger here. <laughs> it's just really a something to remember this day by. We uh, we have another little experiment that we invented, and this is cheese. At least you call it cheese over here. And you see, you, have you seen cheese like that before? Do they feed you that at school or something? <laughs> now this is Teller's pet mouse. It's just a mouse uh, named Billery, named after our president. And if Teller can get a hold of uh, get a hold of it there, there's there's his mouse. And now watch the way he reacts to the cheese. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> He's going right after it, right after it. Now you just watch, because even Billery, even Billery knows the difference between the, the, uh, the, the room temperature cheese and the frozen. Tell's gonna put a little bit in there. You know, with, with this, it actually improves it, I believe, this, this particular brand of cheese. Now when Teller pulls it out, now you'll notice it'll look very different from that down there. There you go. It looks a lot different than the, uh, than the thawed cheese. And you watch the way Billery reacts when she sees the cheese right here. As you just keep your eyes, oh, jeez, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, Billery, Billery, are you okay, Billery? Uh, it's, it's okay, the mouse is fine. It's just, it's just cryogenics like Walt Disney. It, the mouse is okay, we just have to, we just have to wake the mouse up. <laughs> See, it's fine, now, now. There are people watching at home, kids, and you're here. I want you to find a little piece of billery. Here you go. I just want to show you that it, that it is indeed just a rubber mouse that we switched, so no animal's been hurt. And as a matter of fact, billery is safe and sound right in this kid's coat. See that? He's fine. Oh! Oh, jeez! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, jeez! No, no, no. No, it's just... 
Billary is just dead as a rock. <laughs> Not gonna come alive. Uh, but it's okay, we, we didn't kill it, you know that. You saw it, he clearly jumped. Did you see that? Would you testify to him why he jumped? As a matter of fact, he left a, a little suicide note. He's been very, very despondent lately. And it's too bad that Billary's dead because he's going to miss one of the best goddamn comedians in the whole world who, re who he's reduced Teller and I to helpless laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a man whose jokes will tickle your ribs and bite your ass. Is it ass or arse over here? Ar ass? Is that ar arse, arse. And bite your arse. Here he is, Mr. Alexi Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Shut off! <laughs> you don't have to join in. You don't have to testify. It's not a prayer meeting, you know. Yes, yes, testify. Yes, yes. I had a dream, my friends. Yes, I had a dream. I dreamt of a land where everybody had turned to God. I had a dream. And then, my friends, then, my friends, my dream changed. I was standing completely naked in a car park in Kingston on Thames with my testicles covered in marmite. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, actually, I'm sorry. I, I can't really keep this anger and this aggression up anymore because recently I've become a lot more mellow. Yes, I've, 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 I've become a lot more mellow because I've just had a baby. Yeah. No, not a baby, no, five bottles of vodka, yeah. <laughs> but um, as I'm actually something of a disaster area in relationships, actually. I'm, I am something of a disaster area in relationships. I always, I always seem to want the ones who don't want me. Like Archbishop Desmond Tutu. <laughs> he said we could be friends, you know. He said, oh, we can go roller skating, Alexi, you know, but we can never be lovers. <laughs> But um, I had a secret affair with my best friend's wife until she found out about it. <laughs> but um, I, I am something. I, recently, though, um, recently I did. I had to get married. Uh, I had to get married because I got my girlfriend into trouble. I got her involved in the civil war in Angola. <laughs> it didn't last long, though. Um, the relationship didn't last long. And now I, I live alone with my pets. Um, I've got various pets. I've got a cat. Um, you know, people say cats are very clean, you know, because they're always licking themselves. They're not clean, they're just covered in cat spit. <laughs> 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 and I've got, I've got a lemming, you know. Um, that's another pet, you know. Um, you know, most animals leave shit all over the house. This leaves suicide notes. <laughs> Alexi, don't blame yourself, man. <laughs> I come home late at night and find it trying to dial the Samaritans with his little snout, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yes, this is the Samaritans, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sod off and die, will you? <laughs> I also, um, recently I got very depressed. I started worrying about my health. I was very ill and actually I was uh, taken into hospital. And it's terrible now, you know, with the cuts and everything. It's really terrible in hospital now. If you go into, like, intensive care, they don't wire... To see if you're still breathing, they don't wire you up to one of those ECG machines, one of those beep-beep machines anymore. What they do to see if you're still breathing, they stick a harmonica in your mouth. <laughs> and you're lying there going... Uh, Alexi, I'm going to ask you, uh, excuse me if I don't shake your hand, okay? Uh, tell will shake for me. Uh, Alexi, I'm going to ask you something that might be considered a little rude. Uh, what joke really didn't go as well as you'd hoped? Um, <laughs> ooh, let me count. No, I, I think the thing, the kind of improvised thing I did about, you know, having the baby and stuff uh -huh. didn't really seem Now, good. did you like that joke, you people? You like the joke pretty much? Yeah! yeah. 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 Now, a lot of people in the audience seem to have liked that joke, a few didn't. But uh, just the fact that a few didn't, that one woman that yelled out no when you said that, hurt you a lot, didn't it? I mean, does that hurt your feelings? Yeah, very much, See, yeah. my, my point about this is that comedians don't get laughs for a buck. <laughs> comedians are funny or they die. And you guys just don't know how easy it is to feel like you're dying when you're a comedian. 
I am strapped in this. It's a device called the Iron Comedian. I am unable to move. I am locked in the standard stand-up comedian position. <laughs> I have only comedy to protect me. <laughs> to show you how important it is for stand-up comedians to get big laughs, I'm gonna perform a comedy monologue. It's made up of jokes, fine jokes, written by a professional comedy writer. Alexi, if you'd be kind enough, I'd like you to listen to every joke, judge the reaction of the audience, your own reaction, and then tell her will make me feel what a comedian would feel if the joke went over the same way. Now, we hope that this demonstration of the Iron Comedian will give you a new respect for the brave men and women who suffer to make you laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, from the U.S. of A, let's welcome a very funny man, Mr. Penn Jalen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Alexi great, huh? huh? My name is Penn Jalen, as you said, and I want to, uh, I want to tell you that it's great to be in a country where the only place you can find crack is between your butt cheeks. Yep, I'm from the USA, the country that won the Cold War. But hey, you guys did your bit. You won the Cod War. Yeah. While we dealt with communism, you dealt with the threat of fish taking over the West. Thanks for that. I'm still waiting for the movie to come out about the Cod War, though. What's it going to be called? Good morning, Iceland. <laughs> Since I arrived here in Britain, I feel like I've been studying a whole new culture. You know, the, uh, the Eskimos, the Inuits of North America, have 24 different words for snow because it's such an important part of their culture. Well, I've only been over here a few weeks, and I've already discovered that you have at least 47 different words for masturbation. <laughs> okay, a little bit of a laugh. You like that? Well, I guess I'll just toss off another one then. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, <laughs> I've been a little depressed lately because the guy who invented Velcro died last week. I, I was at the wake and I, I gotta tell you, it was, a, it was a little embarrassing. It took seven guys to open the lid of the coffin. <laughs> Made a great noise though. You know, like because of the, the Velcro, that would be a, would be a, oh. <laughs> I've, been, I've been reading about I've been reading about your Europe. I've been reading about your European community, you know, melding 12 countries into one. I think it's a great idea. In fact, why don't we go all the way? Britain, Europe, Canada, even the USA. Let's all join together and give France to China. <laughs> but you know, what is the deal with perfumes nowadays? Why is, every, why is it that every two-bit celebrity has to have their own personal fragrance? I read that Shirley MacLaine has a fragrance coming out called Regression. <laughs> Makes you smell like you did in a past life. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you, Alexi. Uh, perfume jokes. Cher has a new perfume coming out called Anesthetic. <laughs> Anesthetic for, for Cher. <laughs> because, you know, because she has a lot of surgery, <laughs> In the movie Jurassic Park, I love Spielberg movies. And in the movie Jurassic Park, they recreate a dinosaur from the blood left in the body of a petrified insect. <laughs> Which gets me thinking. What with all the flares and platform shoes around at the moment, I sure hope to hell that a mosquito never bit Jim Morrison on the ass. Uh, on the arse. Wait. Jim Morrison? Oh, okay, terms for masturbation, like, like bashing the bishop. J. Arthur Ray. Five knuckle shuffle. Beat the beat. is what it feels like to bomb. Thank you so much, Alexi. You showed no mercy, but you were fair. You were fair, and that's what matters. Ah, oh. uh, that blood tastes awful. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes to show you the world's most expensive card trick, and Teller will be sticking a cigarette where the sun 
rarely shines. After this, peace. <laughs> Looks simple, doesn't it? But when you're watching a sleight of hand master, like my partner Teller, even the simplest action may be a complex deception. Let's watch that again. Is he really throwing down his cigarette? Is he really crushing it out? Is he really adjusting his hat? Is he really taking a cigarette out of the pack? Is he really bothered by an itch in his left eye? Is he really pulling out a lighter and lighting a cigarette? To understand the complexity of Teller's life, you need to know the seven basic principles of magic. One, palm, to hide an object in an apparently empty hand. Two, ditch, to secretly dispose of an unneeded object. Three, steal, the opposite of ditch, to secretly obtain a needed object. Four, load, to secretly move the needed object to where it's needed. Five, simulation, to give the impression that something that hasn't happened <coughs> has. Six, misdirection, to lead attention away from the secret move. And seven, switch, to secretly exchange one object for another. <laughs> he needs nothing but a lit cigarette a pencil, and a flashlight. Let's watch it again from the other side. He palms the cigarette. He simulates crushing it out. He steals the palmed lit cigarette and ditches the lit cigarette in his ear. He exhales smoke to misdirect from the smoke coming out from around his hat. He steals the pencil. He simulates taking the pencil, which is simulating a cigarette, out of the non-existent cigarette pack and putting the simulated cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> he rubs his eye to misdirect while he loads the burning cigarette from his ear. He simulates a lighter with a flashlight and he switches the unlit pencil for the lit cigarette under the cover of misdirection from the flashlight. Palm, simulation, steal, ditch, misdirection, steal, simulation, misdirection, load, simulation, switch, misdirection. Looks simple, doesn't it? Pen, but now I am in Piccadilly Circus in the center of London. Teller is still back in the studio, and we're going to do the world's <laughs> most expensive card trick. 50,000 pounds to find one selected card. Now, Teller does all the hard work on this one. We're going to show you how it's done. So if you want to do it, just get yourself two computers. You're going to need about 100 megabytes of hard disk space free. <laughs> we're using IBM. Everything with about 12 megaram will work just fine. You're gonna need to get yourself a computer technician who can modify your hardware to communicate with a digital graphics generator of a TV network. We're using Channel 4, but any non-BBC station will work <laughs> just fine. You're gonna need a phone line and the appropriate modem and software to communicate with a spectacular screen high over Piccadilly Circus. It's gonna cost you 50 thousand pounds. Maybe you can squeeze it out of the network you're working with like we did, but that includes cards. You're gonna need a couple of punters and, hey, a guy that can type, my partner, and let's do a card trick. We'll do a card trick over here. Uh, yeah, what's your name, sir? Joe. Joe? Yes. Oh, you're from, you're from the U.S.? Detroit. Okay, well, this, this, we, we want to use English people because it's an English show, okay? <laughs> no, uh, uh, what's up? Uh, sorry. No, you can stay watching. Just, uh, what's your name? 
Sue. Sue, English, right? Yes. Sue, and is he with you? Yes. And what's your name? Uh, Ian. Hello, Ian. My name is Penn. Hi. Penn and Teller. Hi, Sue. We're gonna come over here. We'll do a car trick. Sorry, we'll get you in Detroit. Right over here. <laughs> uh, I want to, I want to do a car trick for you, but I want to make sure I don't want to just hand you a deck of cards because it might be gimmicked or something. So why don't you just go buy yourself a deck, okay? Right over there. I'm, I think he has cards here. Right over there. But buy yourself a deck. Yeah, just keep the change it's on channel four. Take a take a free you take a free choice to pick one you want. Okay, right over here. And if you could open up the deck of cards, I have a knife there for you right there. Just open them right up. Stay on the shot. Get, get you in the light. There you go. Just open them up there. There you go. Rip right through. Just tear it open. Tear it right open there. Get that, get that open. Yeah, okay. That's a new deck, isn't it? Not gimmicky yeah. anyway. You just pour them out if you, if you turn them over to go faster. There we go. Okay. And uh, see if you can lose the advertising cards and jokers. That's an advertising card. Joker, okay? Okay, it's fine. Now, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to pick a card. There's a lot of people standing around you really close. I want to make sure that I don't see the card, but none of these people. You don't know, some of them could be with us or something, and especially the camera. So kind of fall back into the crowd and pick yourself a card, make sure no one sees it, and, and, and hide it, okay? Hide it somewhere in the pocket or something. Right over there into the crowd. Now, as soon as they give me the deck back, I have to do a perfect fan so that all 51 remaining indexes show to the camera. It's a little bit of cold out here. I hope I can, uh, hope I can do it. How are you guys doing here? We're dying here. Let him back for the shot. Okay, now you, you, took the, you took the one card, is that right? And you, uh, and you, um, you picked it, you know what it is? Oh, I, oh I'm, not, I'm, 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 just picked, I'm not supposed to touch these. Just just pretend I didn't do anything with them. I'm not supposed to touch them at all. I'm sorry. I just I just almost messed up the trick. But that's a perfectly ordinary deck. There was nothing unusual about it. And you do have the card. It's in your pocket. You know what it is. Is that right? Okay, you're right here now. What I want you to do is want you to concentrate on the card. Okay, you know what the card was, both of you? Okay, concentrate on the card. First the number, then the suit. Come on, concentrate. It's the, um, it's the... Of spades, is that right? Yeah. Four of spades. Okay, show it, show it to the camera. That's the, that's your punchline there. The four of spades, and hold it up right there. The four of spades. Woo. You can keep, you can keep wow. the deck of cards with, with our, with our compliments. <laughs> and channel X. No idea it's done. You mystified? Okay, thanks a lot. As you walk out, just look right up at the uh, sign right there. Just let them, let them through right there. Right up there, Sue and Ian, we are Penn and Teller with the world's most expensive hard trip. It's September 8th at uh, 5.39. We're in a cemetery. At the end of every one of our shows, we like to swear that we've not used any camera tricks. Well, this is a very special cemetery to us. My mother is buried here. Teller's mother is buried here. We like to swear on their graves that we don't use camera tricks. Mom, this is Teller. Moms, we, Penn and Teller, your sons, would like to swear on your graves that we have never and will never use camera tricks to accomplish our magic. <laughs> no illusions next tonight on 4. It's all up front in The Word. Thank you.